Yes, yeah, so, so don't worry about in terms of this again, I'll edit to no and, and so forth, so there's no stress about that. No okay, so should we get started? Yeah, sure. So thank you, Elspeth. Um, the first question I have for you is, what have you seen in practice in learning, anal learning analytics in the past two years? In the past two years, Peter, it's been really interesting, a really interesting time because people are talking about, they're putting the two words together, learning analytics. And in the last two years, I've been seeing a lot of um, work and effort that's going into capturing the learning outcomes, so cap capturing the data relating, relating to performance how people are using systems in terms of, in terms of capturing um, what they've been doing. So, so there's been rows of um, activities and dates and databases basically with, with the information, the numeric information um, in, in, um, in, in, a, in, a, in a form that people can retrieve and if they like number crunching, then and they're talking about uh, how people watching, how people learn, watching their behaviour. That this, this has been really welcomed in in the last couple of years, and it's it's getting stronger and stronger. The the, the cry from the academic side to actually um, be able to look into these numeric um, outcomes to 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 be able to test. And their, their maybe their instruction, but but also to to see um, um, what's the climate in like in their learning environment as to whether whether it's successful or not for the students. Mm -hmm. So so that's what I've been seeing in the last two years. Okay, mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. And so what what are you currently doing in this space at the moment? What I'm currently doing in this space is. Beavering away mostly with my PhD students, but also in, in any other projects that, in a, that that have a component of capturing people's performance in. So, so they're the projects that interest me. Why? Because I I really am passionate about learning analytics. Mm -hmm. But the learning analytics that I'm passionate about involves uh, a spectrum, if you like, and or a, or a, um, um, a continuum of activities, and and just to, to bounce back to the previous question, what's been happening in the last two years? Mm. I believe, let's say we we use a, we use a continuum, and we've got the database people, the people who are the number crunchers. On the right hand side, the people who are very heavily into the statistical evidence, if you like, love fiddling with numbers and things, which, which I do too, but I want to know what those numbers represent in terms of people's behaviour, um, the, the type of knowledge that, that, is, that they're chasing so, to, to learn. So, so I'm the, the number crunches that are at the right hand side. My research really is at the other um, end of the scale where you need to design your um, uh, instructional strategies um, very, um, very well and use robust um, um, principles that underpin the way you interact with students depending on the knowledge that you will hope that they will develop. So it's all about um, task analysis to start with. It's all about investigating the categories of knowledge, okay. and and so then the then the the, the um, activities that gather the outcomes are, are part of the right hand side, which I still do. But mm. but, but, but I have, I'm heavily into the right side of that scale. Mm, so it's kind of trying to merge them all together, is it? Merge yeah. the two sides together. Yes, yes. The whole thing is a, you know now. It's wonderful because at sometimes you can be working in the in a qualitative sense, if you like, so that you're doing a fine-grained analysis of knowledge and tasks and skills and competency and defining those 
those aspects of learning. And then you, th then you can, <laughs> when you're sick of that, or if the, we can strike a roadblock, you can go and, and have it play around in the numbers and the categories of, 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 of how you work with those numbers and what the numbers mean. Mm, okay. And as an academic, how would you like to use this kind of information as, in a practical way? In a practical way, yes, yes, I, I think that's really interesting. Um, in a practical way, I think that it'd be really good as a, an academic to be able to easily access the database. Mm -hmm. So that so that we're very good at designing our classes, um, and and now there's a propensity for, for 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 that to be online. So we nearly we really have to get that act keep that act um, um, a comfortable one. But 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 knowing that especially with Blackboard or the other devices. Um, that, that may come along, one wishes, <laughs> but but there, we do have devices to capture um, how the students are going mm. with their with their um, with the work that they give you. So to be able to easily access that, clunky as it is, would be would be really good. And so the other the other practical aspect of this would be more workshops, please. Mm, yeah. So hands on workshops. I've been to very interesting seminars and they're, they're wonderful, but we can only concentrate for 20 minutes at a time, we know this, but actually having a, having a workshop where, where we're listening, yes, series of workshops, but being able to get down and get your hands a bit grubby, um, it would be wonderful. Yeah. So showing everybody how to, to use these tools and yes. things that are available. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. What's it mean? Um, and so what aspect of learning and teaching do you believe would benefit most from um, learning analytics in the classroom? What, what aspects of learning? And teaching, yeah. Do you believe would benefit from most from learning analytics? All right. I, I believe that um, for me the answer for that lies lies in the, the ability to, to point us back to the left hand side of that scale mm. so that we we use the data to to enforce the the learning principles in the, of, of the instruction mm -hmm. so that's that's my answer for that one okay because because i think you're right that's very important because a lot of staff are quite they get a bit frightened by the uh, the number crunching and the, all the data and stuff like that when it's on that other side, so it can be difficult for them to know what to do with it and how to interpret yes, it. Yes, yes. It's just sitting there, it's like, oh, what does that mean? And and often, especially coming from the school that I do, School mm. of Business, IT and Logistics, um, that, that, that ju we're just aware that, that people do need help with, uh, with the, with the hands-on stuff. Mm. Mm. I mean, we can't be experts at everything, and most of us, most of the people in this building, most academics at RMIT, or let's well, academics at RMIT, are are, are at RMIT because they because they love the place. It's mm. a diverse place mm. to, 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 to work in, and so and so the the the, the um, stock and trade is 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 teaching. The mm. love of the teaching with the interaction with this diverse mix of students. Where am I going with this? So, so, um, mm. Mm. stop. <laughs> really, I can just add yes. that to the that way. <laughs> waffle, waffle. No, no, it's no, great. You're doing really well, thanks. <laughs> I'll let you have a little sniff. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so so we know we know in our school then, and it's that it's you know people's and it it comes from the education side of things. Very often they're the worst techno comfortable people on the planet mm. because their concentration is with other things. Mm. Mm. 
And I think it's really difficult for a teacher in this kind of learning environment, you know, that they are expected to take on all these different skills and, you know, learning analytics obviously is a, another different skill set as well. Yeah, yes, that's right. Scary to, to some. Mm. And, and then any, and, and that's, that's the bit of the worry about this too. You, you can just see the resistance thinking, okay, Big Brother is going to have some, it's all garbage, but Big Brother will be watching my, you know, the somehow it will come back to the facilitator, the way of looking at their, well, I suppose, the end result it might be, but, but, but it's bigger than that. Mm. It's not really about that, the database side of things. Mm. Mm. And within RMIT, are you coming across examples where um, learning and learning analytics has been used? T to be honest, no. Mm. Other other than and it's that's a, it's a great pity because I I perceive the seminars that I've been in. Um, I just feel that they and I don't know whether this is correct or not. Know, but I feel that there's a, a real resistance, people are scared mm. that the big brother is out to get the ones that don't perform. Mm. Well, I mean, and that, that won't happen because there, it's, it's called the washback effect or something like that, where you, can, <laughs> where you teach to, to get the good outcomes. Mm. And there's no knowledge, it's just outcomes. Mm. So that doesn't, that doesn't serve a purpose. Mm. So, no, I don't, I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm not too sure that maybe the target for this, and, why, and, and it might be because I, I can't answer the question directly, is that maybe higher ed is a bit slower than this, this may be adopted. Um, uh, the adoption of these techniques would be, would be easier, a easier transition in the, the, type, the V. TV TAFE version, mm -hmm. um, sorry, the, the part of RMIT, may very well be um, using it a whole lot more than, than the rat bags in higher ed. Mm, okay. Maybe, not rat bags. <laughs> <laughs> and so, in terms of um, the practical side of learning analytics, where would you like to see the area grow at RMIT in the next? Year or so. In the next year or so, um, well, the hands-on, the hands-on workshops, um, and and um, so, so the the workshops relating to instructors learning um, analytics. So, so that side, of, so that, that there's emphasis put on the instruction side. Very heavy, very heavy, heavy emphasis in that. Mm. Um, and, and also, um, I, I also think that there should be, um, and I, I was going to try and look up the term, I didn't have time this morning, a multimedia, like a multimedia fairy or a multimedia person that, that, that I, I was calling for this uh, like 15 years ago, just, just to help with the digital um, presentation of lectures. I was one of the first ones to get into into that, believe it or not, when the when when the data wouldn't talk to the projector, mm -hmm. <laughs> so you had to get with different people with different skills for that. So, so, so I, I believe that there should be a one-to-one -one assistant person for for each academic, mm -hmm. because what we do is, especially in higher ed, so individual. That at one, maybe it's the, the end point and it's a, it's, a, it's a real wish list. But people are just so different with different skills, the academic. Yeah. But putting them into a, into a classroom or into a workshop to, to, to help them, at sooner or later, they need the one to one. Mm. It's almost like a kind of a, a help desk specifically yeah. in this area, too. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. If we could hello like ITS and, and have this as the learning analytics, okay, la la la, that would just be wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then and then the, the the other part that that um, 
within the next um, 12 to 18 months if this could happen. I would like to see a concentration on the skills inventory, which probably is happening. And then, and then, and then I'd be happy because then also this is a wish list in these 12 or 18 months. So, so that this is across the university. So, because there are different skills that an individual needs in aerodynamics, and there, there. Sorry, there are a few basic across the board baseline skills that people need. I'd like to see. I'd like to see a model whereby we can tap into what they are so that we can we can see where these common knowledge domains are for the university. Mm -hmm. So and then and then it filters down to what you do privately in the schools. That'd be a wish list for me. Because I think it's those not well I don't think I know, it's those knowledge domains that underpin the skills. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Is there anything else you want to add about learning analytics? Or? No, don't think so. Um, I, I can promote um, the the tool that we use, but that's for another time. Okay. It, because it gets into the nitty gritty and, and mm. um, the instructional design is, that goes into it and so on. It's, I know that that's just another two hour conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Thank you. All right, I'll just stop it there for a minute. Did you want to? Did you want to say anything? Talk about anything else, or you no. feel like you? No, that's fine. You were fantastic.